In 2015, the long-awaited sixth-generation Ford Mustang GT finally arrived on Australian shores and it was an immediate success. With the option to buy a rear-wheel drive six-speed manual or a six-speed auto, this 5.0-litre V8 Fastback Coupe was the most popular variant making 420 horsepower and was said to achieve a 0 to 100 kilometer time in 4.4 seconds. Sounds exciting, right? Even with around a thousand used models in Australia, it's still so hard to find one for less than $30,000. V8 Mustangs in Australia generally appreciate or hold value, including the less desirable options such as the third generation and fourth generations starting from $15,000. Although the Mustang GT is a unique vehicle, you can still achieve the same kick out of an alternate two-door V8, costing less than half the price. Considering there are not many fun V8 options at a low price point in Australia, I've compiled a list of two-door V8 alternatives suitable for a low budget, and if you're willing to spend a bit of cash to improve these vehicles, can go a very long way, keeping you still under $30,000. Starting with the oldest car on this list that can be found as low as $3,000. That car is Toyota's early V8 Coupe called the Toyota Sora, which is a rebadged Lexus SC400 that was originally marketed as a very stylish Tourer, offering a host of luxuries at the time. The Sora is powered by a 4-litre V8 engine, which is also found in the Lexus LS400, meaning it has a wider availability of parts. Making 265 horsepower, Toyota claims this rear-wheel drive coupe can put down a 0 to 100 kilometer time of 6.3 seconds. However, owners claim it is more like 0 to 100 kilometers in 7 seconds. Handling is well composed for the now low price, however, considering the age, you might still need some upgrades. Although the Sora came out with a 5-speed manual, this option can only be found in the 2.5 inline-6 turbo variant, which means that the V8 only came out with a 4-speed auto. Now, for most people, this is a huge bummer, but manual conversions for the V8 Soras are not uncommon and not that expensive either. Toyota's R154 5-speed manual gearbox is used for manual conversions and can be sourced directly from Toyota for around $4,000. But if you want cheaper, they can also be found in many of Toyota's high-performing pre-2004 models, which also includes other Toyota parts needed to complete the swap. That same thing can be said for its low power, as these engines can sustain boost with stock internals, assuming you find a clean example with a healthy engine. Supercharger kits are abundant for the 1UZ FE V8 engine, so for less than $10,000, you're likely to safely increase the power of your Sora by 100 horsepower. And with that, you even get an insane supercharger whine. I've done heaps of research on these type of engines because it just so happens happens to be that my Bullet Roadster had a version with this same V8, however, with a supercharger. Now in that chassis, it was able to put down a zero to 100 time of 4.7 seconds, which is pretty quick if you ask me. I think it made around 420 horsepower. But unfortunately for me, there were none available on the market at that time, so I wasn't able to snatch one, hence I ended up with the Rover V8 option. So therefore, I do believe these engines are strong enough to withstand a good amount of boost. Now, if you plan on buying the cheapest Sora in the country, then have some cash available and expect to get your hands dirty so you don't regret not just buying the Mustang instead. But on the flip side, clean examples are quickly increasing in price, so as long as you're not spending above $30,000 to clean one up, I'd say it might be worth even more in a decade anyway. Being a 90s car, you'd want to be on the lookout for rust in the window apertures, lower door skins, the boot lid, and boot floor but otherwise these cars were built with a high standard and are good at avoiding major rust problems assuming that the car isn't rotting in someone's backyard. Toyota's V8s are known for their reliability and assuming maintenance is upheld it shouldn't require a rebuild even for examples reading well over 200,000 kilometers on the clock. But if you're planning on chasing more power it doesn't hurt to check the engine health before you add boost. Overall the Toyota Sora is a slow 
JDM V8, but it has plenty of potential. That said, these next two vehicles have heaps more horses to play with, but don't actually fit into a sports car category. Starting as low as $8,000, these two vehicles used to be popular on construction sites. However, over the years, with some depreciation, have found their way into enthusiast hands. It's the Holden VE Commodore SS Ute and the Ford Falcon BA XR8 Ute. So you might be wondering why I considered these two vehicles as a Ford Mustang GT alternative. Well, they are both rear-wheel drive performance V8s that have become popular as track cars, weekend cruisers, burnout cars, and show cars. They are extremely capable, currently very affordable, and have an abundance of parts in circulation. Plus, they're also two doors, so they fit the category. Starting with Holden, you can find them in either a six-speed manual or a six-speed auto powered by a six-liter V8 making 362 horsepower. Being the fastest car on this list, Holden claims a 0 to 100 kilometer time of 5.4 seconds. As for the Ford, it can be found in a 5-speed manual or 4-speed auto making 348 horsepower from its 5.4-litre V8 as Ford claims a 0 to 100 km time of 6.1 seconds, which is quite a gap in comparison to the Holden. When it comes to handling, things get even worse for the Ford unfortunately, mainly due to dull responsiveness. The Holden suspension is much more refined and handles a lot better without any modifications. Ford and Holden have always had somewhat of a rivalry in Australia, so when these two vehicles came out, reviewers would compare them head to head, and it did seem this time around that Holden had more to offer than the Ford. One car reviewer even went ahead to say that the Holden changes directions without protest and taking corners was an absolute joy, but they couldn't say the same thing about the Ford. The Ford makes financial sense as a touring car, but may fall short as a fun hill climb or track car, therefore modifications will be necessary. However, the main thing going for it is the styling, as it is more appealing both inside and out as compared to the Holden. Because both can be found for around the same price range, it just comes down to personal preference as well as the intended use of that vehicle. That said, I'm not really sure why anyone would opt in for the Ford unless they are happy to compromise performance for styling or have always been a Ford person at heart. Either way, you will find hundreds of use options whichever vehicle you choose, plus both have an abundance of parts and support available. Because cheap, fun V8s are already scarce in Australia, I'm sure it won't be long before people start holding on to these performance utes, therefore pushing up the price. When it comes to faults, the Holden can experience a variety of common problems that can be costly if not addressed promptly, from electrical issues to transmission faults. The same goes for the Ford, as owners tend to have problems with the 5-speed manual, as well as premature timing wear. Although these options are far from the Mustang GT experience, you're still getting an extremely capable V8 alternative, so I'm sure these performance utes can accommodate. Moving on to the very last vehicle, I was about to cut this one from the list because in Australia, European vehicles tend to be not so budget friendly when it comes to maintenance and repairs. However, I've added it anyway and I'll give you a very quick summary. The Mercedes-Benz SLK 500 can be found for as low as $7,000 powered by a 5 litre V8 making 306 horsepower. This rear wheel drive coupe can only be found with a 5 speed automatic and Mercedes claimed it can achieve a 0 to 100 km time of 6 seconds. Being a luxury car which focuses on driver comfort, reviews did claim it does doesn't feel very fast. If you're looking for a stylish two-door coupe, then this is perfect for you, but keep in mind that reliability isn't its strong point and maintenance may be very expensive for a car this age. Overall, if you're purchasing any vehicle on this list, do your own research because there may be more common issues than what I've actually listed out, but also, Get a friend to help you with a pre-purchase inspection or pay someone, or unless you have the skill, do it yourself. It goes a long way to make sure that a service history exists and you've addressed all the common issues that a car might have. But if you like this video, make sure you support the channel, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. And make sure you follow my channel so you can keep up to date with all my new videos. Thanks.